Welcome back to the channel, another episode of Brian Reads the News. This is where I take a news article and take it from my lips to your ears. Today, we got a fresh one uh, since it's the eve of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Uh, I thought I would pick an article about him. Uh, today we have one, 10 things you may not know about Martin Luther King Jr. Martin Luther King Jr. So this is from the history.com website, history.com, 10 things you may not know about Martin Luther King Jr. Let's take a look. Here you see it. This is by Christopher Klein on August 28th, 2023. It was published. Original was done on April 4th, 2013. So it's been updated. There he is. Article reads, uh, Baptist minister and social activist, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., 1929 to 1968, dedicated his life to the nonviolent struggle for justice in the United States. King's leadership played a pivotal role in ending entrenched segregation for black Americans and to the creation of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Read on to discover more facts about the life and legacy of the civil rights icon. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's take a look. Number one on the list, it says, King's birth name was Michael, not Martin. Article states here, King's, King was born Michael King Jr. on June, January 15, 1929. In 1934, however, his father, a pastor at Atlanta's Ebenezer Baptist Church, traveled to Germany and became inspired by the Protestant Reformation leader, Martin Luther. As a result, King Sr. changed his own name as well as that of his five-year-old son. That's interesting, I didn't know that. He was so inspired by the leader, uh, Martin Luther, that he decided to change his name, not only his name, but also his kid's name. That's crazy, it's, it's wild. I don't know if I've ever heard anybody do that, but uh, he must have been quite inspired. Number two on the list, it says here, King entered college at the age of 15. King was such a gifted student that he skipped grades 9 and 12 before enrolling in 1944 at Morehouse College, the alma mater of his father and maternal grandfather. Although he has, he has the son, grandson, and great-grandson of Baptist ministers, King did not intend to follow the family vocation until Morehouse President Benjamin E. Mays, a noted theologian, convinced him otherwise. King was ordained before graduating college with a degree in sociology. So that's interesting. He, uh, he skipped two grades, nine and 12. He must have been pretty bright for, him to let, for them to let him skip two grades like that. Um, and then he followed in his father's footsteps uh, at Morehouse College there. So father and grandfather and gra maternal grandfather. At number three, it says, King received his doctorate in systematic theology. This article says here, after earning a divinity degree from Pennsylvania's Crozer Theological Seminary, King attended graduate school at Boston University, where he received his PhD degree in 1955. The title of a dissertation was A Comparison of the Conceptions of God in the Thinking of Paul Tillich and Henry Nelson Wyman. So it sounds like he got his uh, sociology degree at Morehouse College and then went on to Boston University for his graduate school. And then in 1955 he got his degree from the University of Boston, Boston University in systematic theology. So uh, systematic theology is... Alright, I'm gonna, not going to pretend like I actually knew. I had to look it up. It says, Systematic theology is the attempt to put Christian doctrine in a logical order often starting from one fundamental principle. So the Christian doctrine in logical order. At number four on the list it said, King's I Have a Dream speech was not his first at the Lincoln Memorial. It says here, six years before his iconic oration at the March on Washington, King was among the civil rights leaders who spoke in the shadow of the great emancipation, emancipator during the prayer pilgrimage for, for freedom on May 17, 1957. Before a crowd estimated at between 15 to 30,000, King delivered his first national address on the topic of voting rights. His speech, in which he urged America to give us the ballot, drew strong reviews and positioned him at the forefront of the civil rights leadership. That's kind of interesting. They worded here was, uh, he spoke in the shadow of the great emancipator, 
uh, I'm assuming that was Abraham Lincoln. When you click on that link, it goes to Abraham Lincoln. During the prayer pilgrimage for freedom in 1957, for 15 to 30,000. So they weren't quite sure. Was it 15 or 30? That's quite a big difference. But uh, a lot of people, nonetheless, uh, that was his first speech at the Lincoln Memorial. At number five, it says, King was in prison nearly 30 times article says here according to the King Center the civil rights leader went to jail 29 times he was arrested for acts of civil disobedience and on trumped up charges such as when he was jailed in Montgomery Alabama in 1956 for driving 30 miles per hour in a 25 mile per hour zone so to be jailed 29 times that's a Mostly civil disobedience, which you know, you're know, you trying to get things done, you gotta raise a little ruckus sometimes. Uh, that's understandable, but uh, driving 30 in a 25, come on, that's uh, that seems a little shady. Yeah, I'm sure they didn't make it easy on him back then. At number six, it says, King narrowly escaped an assassination attempt a decade before his death. It says here, on September 20, 1958, King was in Harlem signing copies of his new book, Stride Toward Freedom in Blumstein's new department store when he was approached by Zola Ware Curry. The woman asked if he was Martin Luther King Jr. after he said yes. Curry said, quote, I've been looking for you for five years and she plunged a seven inch letter opener in his chest. The tip of the blade came to rest alongside his aorta and King underwent hours of delicate emergency surgery. Surgeons later told King that he that just one sneeze could have punctured the aorta and killed him. From his hospital bed where he convalesced for weeks, King issued a statement affirming his nonviolent principles and saying he felt no ill will toward his mentally ill attacker. That's interesting, I never heard about that. They got him with a letter opener originally. Seven inch letter opener into his chest, ouch. Resting alongside his aorta. I guess, you know, um, to give speech from the hospital bed is kind of cool in a certain way. I mean, ideally you don't want to be in a hospital bed, but uh, you can definitely be heard when you're giving a, a speech from a hospital bed. You know, it kind of adds a little aura to your to your cred. I don't know. I'm sure you'd rather be uh, in front of 15 to 30,000 people at the uh, Lincoln Memorial, but uh, I guess he... Uh, he, he took his message wherever he went, which was what made him so great. At number seven, it says, King's last public speech foretold his death. Article says, King had to come to Memphis in April of 1968 to support the strike of the city's black garbage workers, and in a speech on the night before his assassination, he told an audience at Mason Temple Church, quote, like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place, but I'm not concerned about that now. I've seen the promised land. I may not get here, get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. And I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Yeah, when you know, you know. You hear that said sometimes now, you know, he uh, he foreshadowed, he foretold his death. He, he, he spoke about it and he was okay with it. My eyes have seen the, the glory of the coming of the Lord. You know, you've all heard that said before. You know, it's kind of been etched into your brain over the years. All the stories you've read or heard in school about Martin Luther King Jr. And, you know, I'm sure that you've heard that said before. And uh, it's kind of a sad thing that, you know, he had to go through life having that uh, burden, that, that feeling, you know, as he's trying to get it so much accomplished, yet he feels uh, the end is right around the corner. And, you know, he knew. Yeah. At number eight, it says, Members of King's family did not believe James Earl Ray acted alone article here says Ray, a career cl criminal, pled guilty to King's assassination but later recanted. King's son Dexter met publicly with Ray in 1997 and argued for the case to be reopened. King's widow Coretta believed the mafia and local, state, and federal government agencies were deeply involved in the murder. She praised the result of the 1999 civil trial in which a Memphis jury decided decided the assassination was the result of a conspiracy and that Ray was set up to take the blame. 
A U.S. Department of Justice investigation released in 2000 reported no evidence of a conspiracy. Yeah, that's a tough one. I mean, what do you believe? You believe the family? I'm sure the family was the closest to him. They probably knew what was going on. You know, if they say the guy didn't act alone and that it was, uh, you know, the mafia and uh, more to it, then you probably got to believe the family. Um, in the end, the U.S. Department of Justice investigation uh, said there was no evidence of conspiracy, but uh, you know, for there to be talks of a conspiracy, there was probably a conspiracy. I mean, in our world today, you know, everything's a conspiracy, but uh, back then, you know, there's talks of it, there's probably truth. Like they say, where there's smoke, there's fire. At number nine, it says King's mother was also slain by a bullet. On June 30, 1974, a 69-year-old Alberta Williams King played the organ at a Sunday service inside Ebenezer Baptist Church. Marcus Wayne Chenault Jr. rose from the pew front pew, drew two pistols, and began to fire shots. One of the bullets struck and killed King, who died steps from where her son had preached nonviolence. The deranged gunman said that Christians were his enemy and that although he had received divine instructions to kill King's father who was in the congregation he killed King's mother instead because she was closer. The shooting also left a church deacon dead. Chenault received the, a death penalty sentence and was later changed to life imprisonment in part due to the King family family's opposition to capital punishment. Such a sad story you know to hear that uh, Guy was in the front pew, pew, drew two pistols and fired shots, killing his mother, killing King's mother. Um, just steps away from her son had preached nonviolence. You know, he's that's where he goes. That's the Baptist church where he he preaches nonviolence, and that's where his mother is killed. Steps away from where he did all that work. It's really sad. At number 10, it says George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, and Cesar Chavez are the only other Americans to have have had their birthdays observed as a national holiday. Article says here, in 1983, President Ronald Reagan signed a bill that created a federal holiday to honor King. The holiday, first comm commemorated in 1986, is celebrated on the third Monday in January, close to the civil rights leader's January 15th birthday. So that's pretty good company, old GW, George Washington, uh, Abraham Lincoln, and Cesar Chavez, the only others have their birthdays observed as a national holiday and uh, he joins them uh, Reagan had that bill signed in 83 uh, making it a federal holiday to honor him um, and his birthday is on the 15th so uh, it's gonna be on his birthday it's interesting well, hopefully you guys enjoyed this 10 things you may not know about Martin Luther King jr explore 10 f surprising facts about the civil rights leader again this comes from uh, the, the website history.com if you want to check it out yourself there's a nice photo of him here in all of the article that I read um, there's a little video here too uh, that uh, I haven't clicked on but you could probably go there and click on that and check that out yourself um, educate yourself a little bit on his special day tomorrow Hopefully you guys like this. If you like this segment of Brian Reads the News, uh, maybe consider subscribing. Ring that notification bell. That way you'll become aware when I drop another Brian Reads the News. I like to do these news articles on occasion. Uh, let you guys know what's going on in the world. I thought it would be fun to take this moment to uh, celebrate this uh, Martin Luther King Jr. since we're having the big holiday tomorrow. So uh, hopefully you guys learned a few moments, a few things, took a few moments and learned a few things. I know I learned a few things here today, so uh, we'll, see, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.